First and foremost, I want to preface this video by saying that I am not a lawyer, nor do I practice law, and therefore, none of this is legal advice, nor should it be taken as so. Law is subject to interpretation, change, precedence, and if ever you have any questions or you want to have understanding of the laws, you should speak with someone who practices law and can be a legal advisor to you, which I don't practice law. <laughs> now, with that kind of disclaimer at the beginning of this, this is going to be a real video. So let's take a look at what we got going on. The killer opening question. Do you need to register with the copyright office? The answer is no. Now, with that out of the way, you don't need to. Should you? And I feel like I can't actually answer that question for you because it depends on your circumstances and the levels of risk that you are willing to take. So a lot of people aren't going to be happy about my preface to this topic. I know this because whenever I tell anybody this, it becomes a debate. So to get all the debating out of the way, let's go cite the law directly and go from there. Copyright.gov. Title 17. You can find it on the front page as well. If you just go to copyright.gov and click law and policy, and go to copyright law. Might even be straight on the home page. Yep, copyright law. Okay, so the first point and what we're going to tackle. Do you need to copyright? In order to have copyright protection, do you have to actually register with the copyright office? To look at this, we're going to go chapter one, section 102. And I'm going to break this stuff down really simple for you. Might seem really complicated, but bear with me. And if I never stated, this is US law. I'm sure you could see from the website for any of my people from other countries. 102. Copyright protection subsists in accordance with this title, an original work of authorships fixed in any tangible medium of expression, now known or later, later developed, from which they can be perceived, reproduced, or otherwise communicated, either directly or with the aid of machine or device. Okay, before we go any farther, that is a mouthful. Copyright protection subsists, okay? If I look up subsist, definition, we're going to go here. We can see law, legal definition, remain in being, force, or effect, okay? Your copyright protection remains in being, in force, or in effect, in accordance with this title, an original work of authorship fixed in any tangible medium of expression. Okay, so tangible medium of expression. What does that mean? Well, go here. A work is fixed in a tangible medium of expression when it's embodiment in a copy, phono record, by or under the authority of the author is sufficiently permanent, stable to permit it to be perceived, reproduced, or otherwise communicated for a period of more than a transitory duration. A work consisting of sounds, images, or both that are being transmitted is fixed for purposes of this title if a fixation of the work is being simultaneously made with this transmission. Okay, so it's fixed in a tangible, tangible medium of expression when by or under the authority of you, it is permanent or stable to permit it to be perceived, which means you're not putting it up to take it down. You're putting it up, you're publishing it to put it out there for it to be perceived, reproduced, or otherwise communicated for a period of more than a transitory duration. We know what transients are if we're doing music and we're mixing and stuff. Transients are a short period of time. If you're putting it out there to be perceived 
for a long period of time in a way that's considered permanent or stable, it is fixed and tangible medium. Now, a work consisting of sounds, images, or both, so sounds, that's us, that are being transmitted is fixed if a fixation of the work is being made with its transmission. So that's debatable. That could just be radio, or you could say that's SoundCloud and these other streaming surfaces. But either way, it's embodiment in a copy, which would be wave, et cetera, wave files, blah, 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 put out to be permanent, stable, and be perceived. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Now, if we go back to 102, if you post your work on a medium of expression, such as SoundCloud or something like that, with the intention of it being communicated, with the aid of device or machines. And if your work is considered fixed, which means sufficiently permanent or stable to permit it to be perceived, reproduced, or otherwise communicated for a period of more than a transitory duration, aka you're posting it for the long haul rather than for a short period of time. If all those things above are true, then copyright protection subsists in accordance with the title. And if we finish the law, works of authorship include literary works, musical works, including and accompanying any words, which is going to be your composition, dramatic works, including any accompanying music. That's going to be something different from my understanding. This would be for like operas and dramatic performances and things like that, pantomimes and choreographic works pictorial graphic sculptural works, motion pictures, and other audiovisual works, sound recordings, and architectural works. And sound recordings is going to be like master recordings. And we're going to talk about this in a second. In no case does copyright protection for an original work of authorship extend to any idea, procedure, process, system, method of operation, yada, 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 yada. These are going to be different things that require different protections, such as patents, things like that. Now, if we check out sound recordings, we've got something to look at. If I go look at their definition for sound recordings, sound recordings are works that result from the fixation, that word again, of a series of musical, spoken, or other sounds, but not including sounds accompanying a motion picture or other audio visual work, regardless of the nature of the material objects, such as discs, tapes, other phone works, phono records in which they are embodied. So with this being stated, something like YouTube might not be enough to substantiate copyright for a sound recording specifically, which would be your master track. That's something you would want to ask a lawyer about, or you can be safe and publish to a medium that is for audio specifically with no visual work being added, such as SoundCloud, Spotify. You can use a distributor, you know, to place it in a medium that is not audio visual or motion picture. Now, something else to note is we have no such definition excluding musical works that are including any accompanying words from inclusivity with audiovisual works. There's nothing saying that if it exists with audiovisual works, that it's not considered a musical work with accompanying words in that medium. But again, if you want to be safe, You can go with the SoundCloud, no audio visual type of direction. Or if you want to be safer, go register for copyright. If you go with running it through a distributor, the distributor won't protect you, but the publication of your audio will. Now, even if your copyright protection subsists or exists or remains in effect, you still, if you decide you want to sue, have to file with the copyright office in order to do so. But we'll get more into that part in a bit, including how you might save thousands of dollars. This doesn't mean you shouldn't pay to file with the copyright office. Taking that route 
will give a lot of people the most peace of mind. Uh, however, it does cost money. You may not need to actually spend. And if copyright protection subsists either way, then why spend the money for protection you already have? And, you know, to answer that question, I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> so let's talk about the advantages of filing. Okay. If we go back to Title 17. We'll see a lot of good stuff you can go check out. I recommend you do check some of this stuff out. If this is your work and your business, you want to have some idea of what the heck is going on. We got sound recordings and music videos, which is about infringement on performances and such like that. Digital audio recording devices and media, which has a bunch of good information on civil remedies and royalties and stuff like that. For this one, though, if you do go read it, I suggest you take the time to read all the definitions at the top, because if you don't, you could misconstrue a few things. There is our appendix where you can actually see the laws. And in here, there's cool stuff like the Orange G, Hatch Bob, Good Lit Music Modernization Act. But we don't want any of that. What we do want is chapter four. So these notice of copyright sections are about how you see those little C's, it'll say copyright 2012 and all that good stuff. It's about the rules of where and how to place those. Deposit of copies or phono records is about how to properly, well, deposit copies to the Library of Congress. The rest of this is general information and law regarding how to register. But really quick, I took a moment between cuts to see if there was information not in law straight from copyright.gov and we got something pretty cool for anybody who might want to yell at me in the comments when is my work protected your work is under copyright protection the moment it is created and fixed in a tangible form that is perceptible either directly or with aid of a machine or device do i have to register with your office to be protected no registration generally is voluntary copyright exists from the moment the work is created you will have to register, however, if you wish to bring a lawsuit or infringement of a U.S. work. Why should I register my copyright work if it's protected automatically is the next part of the video. I've heard about poor man's copyright. What is it? The practice of sending a copy of your own work to yourself. There's no provision for copyright raw law regarding any such type of protection. It is not a substitute for registration. This part that we're going to talk about next. Registration is recommended for a number of reasons. Many choose to register their works because they wish to have the facts of their copyright on public record and have a certificate of registration. Here's the good part that was going to save you thousands and thousands of dollars. Registered works may be eligible for statutory damages and attorney fees in successful litigation. We will go into the details of this momentarily. Just because you're registered, doesn't mean you're going to get attorney fees. There's certain things you need to meet, certain prerequisites and requirements. That's what we're going to talk about. Something else that I was originally going to cover by reading the law, but I don't need to anymore, is finally, if registration occurs within five years of publication, it is considered prima facie evidence in the court of law. Don't know if I said that right, but basically that means at face value evidence. So anything that you wrote in your registration is actual evidence that can be presented and will actually carry some weight. So if your argument between you and someone else is a he says, she says, that might tip the scale for you winning in court. So, but that's within five years. Now, if you want to see the prima facie law, it's here in 410, section C, and any judicial proceedings blah, 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 five years, publication of work shall constitute prima, chef, prima facie evidence of the validity of copyright and facts stated in the certificate. The weight to be accorded to the certificate is within discretion of the court. So where we want to tackle is 411, but 411 references 412. So we're going to go to 412 real quick. Let's try and get to saving you your thousands of dollars. So, in any action under this title, other than an action brought for a violation of rights of the author under Section 106A, 
So section 106 is about exclusive rights. Section 106A is about any other types of rights. So they're saying other than any rights that are not exclusive, you have to have exclusive rights. So in any action under this title, other than if you don't have exclusive rights, an action for infringement of the copyright of a work that has been pre-registered under section 408F. So 408F is for pre-registration of works being prepared for commercial distribution. This is important because it's not just your registration. You can register for copyright, but this is about pre-registration prior to the actual publication of the work. This means you have to pre-register to get the following benefits. That has been pre-registered before the commencement of infringement, and that has an effective date of registration. We're not talking about pre-registration anymore. We're talking about registration. And notice the word and. So it has to be pre-registered for commercial use before the commencement of the infringement on your copyright protection or your, your rights. And it has to have an effective date of actual registration, not later than, we have two options here, not later than the earlier, okay? So this is a mouthful of three months after the first publication of work or one month after the copyright owner has learned of infringement or an action instituted under 411C. So again, two options, and we have to choose the earliest, not later than the earliest of three months after first publication, which means you have to have an effective registration date, three months after that first publication, period, end of discussion. If it's more than three months, doesn't matter. This is out the window, okay? Or one month after you've learned of the infringement. So that means if you are five days into having your work published and you learn that someone's infringing on your rights, you have one month, okay, to make sure you have an effective registration date. And you'll notice we have or an action instituted under section 411C. 411C is actually right here. And it basically is just talking about a specific way in which your rights can be infringed on. So basically it's saying after you learned of the infringement or you learned of the infringement. <laughs> no award of statutory damages or attorney fees as provided by section 504 and 505 shall be made for. Okay, 504, it states and talks about actual damages and statutory damages for the sake of remedying your situation. And 505 talks about recouping lawyer fees. Any infringement of copyright in an unpublished work and don't worry, I'm going to show you this rewritten in plain English. Any infringement of copyright in an unpublished work commenced before the effective date of its registration, or two, any infringement of copyright commenced after first publication of the work and before the effective date of registration, unless such registration is made within three months after the first publication of the work. So before we continue, I'm going to show you this in plain English. So here we are. In any lawsuit under this title, unless we're talking about non-exclusive rights, and I replaced the word action with lawsuit, just FYI to make this easier to conceptualize. In any lawsuit under this title, unless we're talking about non-exclusive rights, a lawsuit for infringement of copyright of a work that has been pre-registered for commercial use prior to the infringement and has an effective date of registration no later than three months after the work is published or one month after learning about the infringement. Will any award of statutory damages or of attorney fees be made in the event that any infringement of unpublished work prior to the effective registration date, or there is any infringement prior to effective registration date, 
unless you registered within three months of publishing. So as long as we're not talking about infringement of unpublished work, that is prior to an effective registration date or any infringement that is prior to the effective registration date, unless you registered within three months of publishing and did not find out till afterwards, because if you found out that it happened before the registered three months, before that three month time window, if you found out, you would only have one month to bring your registration up to date. So, Basically, this means unless you pre-register and make sure your effective registration date is within three months uh, of publishing and one month of infringement, there's chances that in the event of a lawsuit, you will be tackling all of the lawyer fees with no option for recourse. You will also not be able to receive statutory damages. Now, Statutory damages can range anywhere from $200 to $150,000. Without boring you, reading a bunch more laws and breaking them down, that's the gist of that. When suing, there is a difference between actual damages and statutory damages. And if you were to choose to sue for statutory damages, you are waiving your right to pursue to pursue any actual damages. Now, 412 here, that talks about your ability to recoup lawyer fees or statutory damages, these prerequisites are completely besides the fact for actual damages. Regardless of this, you can still sue for actual damages even if you didn't register within the amount of time. There's no verbiage here saying you cannot. And to understand what actual damages is, actual damages is actual provable damages. So if so-and-so made this much money on your name or caused you to lose money in some way, and you can prove that, that is going to be more down the route of actual damages. Although you can sue for actual damages, this is one of the benefits of registering with the copyright office and knowing the law because lawyer fees, on the other hand, can stack up very quickly. And it's nice to have an option to recover those in the event that someone really is infringing your rights and wrongfully using your works in some way that is actually hurting you or hurting your pockets. Now, you can register at any time, but in order to enact a lawsuit, you have to register, which is what section 411 that we skipped is about. 411 covers not only having to register to sue, but what happens if your registration gets denied and you're attempting to sue. And for someone who's deciding whether they want to register or not, I think this is something to take into account. And so, we will cover it. 411, except for an action, which is a lawsuit, brought for a violation of rights under section 106A, which again is talking about non-exclusive rights, and subject to the provisions of subsection B, which says a certificate of registration satisfies the requirements of this section and section 412, regardless of whether the certificate contains any inaccurate information, unless... The inaccurate information was included on the application with knowledge that it was inaccurate or the inaccuracy of information, if known, would have caused the register of copyrights to refuse registration. So register of copyrights basically means the people filing the copyright stuff with the feds. If you go to section 101 with all the definitions and you type in register of copyrights, you can get the context clues pretty quickly. This is the people you're filing to, the register of copyrights. So basically, write your stuff accurately, people. <laughs> so no civil action for infringement of the copyright in any United States works shall be instituted until pre-registration or registration of the copyright claim has been made in accordance with this title. In any case, however, this is the important part that I think you should know about. 
where the deposit, application, and fee required for registration have been delivered to the Copyright Office in proper form, that means you did everything right, and registration has been refused, the applicant is entitled to institute a civil action for infringement if notice thereof with a copy of the complaint is served on the register of copyrights. So if they refuse you copyright and your registration, they don't give you an effective date, they refuse it, you can still take civil action. You can still enact a lawsuit on the infringement of your rights if you notify with a copy of the complaint the copyright office. Give the notice thereof for the civil action with a copy of the complaint and serve it on the register of copyrights, which if you're suing, a lawyer is going to help you with that stuff anyways. But that's just something that's good to know because at least you know you can still fight in court even if you waited and they straight up deny your registration. Now, the downside to this, the register, which means whoever's filing with or for the copyright office, however that works, at his or her option may become a party to the action with respect to the issue of registrability of the copyright claim by entering an appearance within 60 days after such service but the register's failure to become a party shall not deprive the court jurisdiction to determine that issue. So basically, this means that they can decide to become a part of the lawsuit and state any facts or info they may have about the legitimacy for your copyright ownership of the work in question. So yeah, that was quite a lot. And if you stuck with me through that, then nice. <laughs> I support and encourage anybody who wants to know more about their rights and anything pertaining to their work and their art, because that means you're serious and you want to do it right. And if you're that person, then good on you, because you're the kind of person who's probably going to take the steps to do the right things in your career to get you somewhere. There's plenty of more to read and know. However, going over all of this in one video would be kind of ridiculous. <laughs> and, you know, this stuff changes over time. So check back every once in a while. I feel like I remember there used to be more perks to registering earlier that I haven't seen and don't see anymore. I vaguely remember that, but last time I read this was five or six years ago. A lot can change in five or six years. If you don't know your rights and something changes, that could be the difference between you getting those lawyer fees or not. And that might not seem important now, but it would definitely be very important if you ever do find yourself in a lawsuit. So thank you for sticking with me. Keep pursuing knowledge. Keep getting better. I hope this video was helpful. So if you like the video, please like the video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio. Adios.